How U.S. Embassy is Helping M7 Kill Off NGOs, CSOs in Uganda Mulengara News.com, by Mulengara October 31, 2023 at 12.08 a.m. by Mulengara Reporters. In a bid to contribute towards bridging of the gap that was left or created by the acrimonious exit of DGF, which used to provide SHS $500 billion annually to support GO operations in Uganda, the U.S. government through USAID came up with something called Civil Society Support Activity, CSSA. This was meant to support capacity building amongst non-government organizations, NGOs, and civil society organizations, especially those involved in governance work, to build capacity and keep going. Makarare LDC-based DENIVA was one of the key implementing partners for the project through which hundreds of local NGOs were to be supported for five years subject to renewal and extension. Beneficiary organizations included Dr. Sylvia Namubiru's LASPNET, the GO Forum, Jacqueline Asayamwi's Civ Source in Naguru, Makarare Law Scholars Kichuo Cha Kataba and Robert Karenga's National Coalition of Human Rights Defenders Uganda NCHRDU etc., which was recently thrown under the bus under very malicious and dubious circumstances. The USAID, through which the U.S. government offered to avail the grant billions to support civil society strengthening in Uganda, controversially sidelined Ugandan organizations, like GO Forum, Geneva and Nicholas Opio's Chapter 4 etc., with even better capacity and intriguingly picked the U.S.-based East-West Management Institute Inc., EWMI, to be the one to manage and appropriate the funds. Deneva, on whose decades tested countrywide structures and network the grant was justified on the understanding it would closely work with EWMI, was also long sidelined on curious grounds. However, the way EWMI has gone about the implementation of the program has left many local CSOs leaders talking bitter though subtly fearing reprisals. Some GO leaders have privately accused EWMI officials of overt conflict of interest and corruption practices. For instance, one Ugandan GO leader was recently sweet-talked to abandon plans to blow the whistle exposing USAID officials who recently proclaimed a report deceptively indicating that his per organization had received up to US$225,000 in the last three years at the rate of US$75,000 annually yet in actual sense only US$75,000 had been released to the struggling Ugandan GO. One of the EWMI topmost bosses wrote a confidential email begging the disgruntled local GO leader to keep quiet ostensibly to allow them time to internally work out ways on how his grant would be enlarged for another five years at a time peer organizations are being purged off the USAID governance grants list on flimsy grounds of inadequate capacity. The local GO agreed to grumblingly hold their peace while waiting on the controversial and inappropriate acting EWMI officials to keep their word. Karengas NCHRD USTRANGED. Away from the above referenced corrupt dealings, Robert Karengas National Coalition of Human Rights Defenders Uganda NCHRDU has been thrown under the bus in ways which even the GO, which the U.S. accuses of impunity, couldn't do and get away with it. In total disregard of the laws of Ugandan laws governing contracting and grant implementation agreements signed earlier on, Caroline Ogaru, who serves as the Director for Finance Management and Civil Society Strengthening Activity, CSSA, operations under USAID, which is part of the U.S. Embassy in Kampala, has written an email notifying the NCHRDU Executive Director Council Robert Karenga of the abrupt decision to suddenly discontinue all the USAID funding to his organization. No clear reasons were given in Karenga, who has vowed to deploy all the energies he has in him to fight this apparent injustice, was given only days, as opposed to three months, to see off all the Ugandan employees he had recruited to implement all CSSA-related activities. He has equally been advised to terminate all supplier and service provision-related contracts he had entered with Ugandan organizations to supply goods and services aimed at enabling his organization to implement CSSA-related activities in the country. Many of these service providers were engaged on long-term basis upon approval by both USAID and EWMI after it had been indicated that the CSSA intervention was here to stay. In her confidential mail, USAID Operations Director Caroline Ogaru directs Karenga to make sure all CSSA or USAID-related activities are promptly halted not later than 31 October this very year. A tearful Karenga tried storming the EWMI head offices based at Kalalo former Vodafone Telecom offices to see Ogaru's superiors but still that didn't help much. In his response to Ogaru's email, Karenga makes it clear that the abrupt termination of the funding is tainted with ill will, 
bad faith and illegality the very reason why his organization will be vigorously fighting back up to the USAID global headquarters back home in the United States. Karenga makes it clear that many of the consultancy services provision agreements he signed with his suppliers can't be terminated without exposing his financially already struggling organization to very expensive legal liability. Ulengara News has established that some of the local organizations got into problems and had USAID, EWMI suspend the grant funding relationships with them because they fired certain employees and managers deemed corrupt only for the same fired staffers to end up being hired as independent consultants by the same USAID which is supposed to be practicing zero tolerance to corruption. In some cases, the very funding being terminated is being channeled to remunerate previously knifed corrupt employees doing exactly the same work at their hastily incorporated consultancy companies and firms. As all this squeezing out of local NGOs continues, the same EWMI is on the verge of compromisingly pouring billions into Jen Museveni's NGO Bureau which is supposed to independently supervise and regulate their work in Uganda to ensure full compliance to Ugandan laws. The same GO Bureau, led by the very powerful counsel Stephen Akello, has had a bad reputation over the years with many GO leaders accusing it of working towards suffocating them as opposed to enabling their work.